I'm pumped for this movie. I can't wait for audiences to see it. Um, and I'm really excited to, to get to talk to you uh, about the creation and the conception behind Supercell. Um, if you wouldn't care, can we just kind of talk at the beginning and what, what kind of inspired this idea? Because not only are you directing, but you also co-wrote it. So what, what kind of brought the idea of Supercell to, to mind and then to reality? So four years ago uh, in 2019, I went storm chasing with my fiance and I saw Supercell's up close and personal and got addicted. I, I've never seen something so large and, and dangerous, but beautiful. Uh, as a filmmaker, I, I just bring my camera with me. I have a, a Sony a7S II and I would just photograph for about a week. We, we chased and we photographed and I filmed you know, uh, daytime, nighttime lightning. And it was just fascinating. And I think I went back a week later with another friend of mine. And soon after that, I, I realized that this was a movie, um, you know, 1996 Twister came out. Oh, yeah. um, and that was the last time we heard about storm chasers and storm chasing. Uh, there's a lot of movies about, you know, end of times, Roland Emmerich's, uh, you know, 2012 or uh, Day After Tomorrow, uh, big CG effects, but there hasn't really been a kind of a intimate story about the community of Storm Chasers. And that was the the budding uh, concept uh, four years ago. Yeah. Well, w within this, you know, Storm Chaser movie, there's also uh, the character of William and, and you know, there, there's just so much of him on this journey discovering who he is and discovering you know the legacy of his father and how that fits in with his life so what what kind of brought about you know the the storyline itself with William and that story that you wanted to tell within this storm chaser film well you know it's important with with spectacle because you know obviously spectacle sells right so yeah. this is a tornado chasing action movie is is probably how they market it but for me it's really about the characters and the personal journey because that's that's why people care and that's why people you know they watch through it and and then they share it and they they rewatch it because it's it's personal to them you know this story is very personal to me um, you know, William's journey of, of chasing his father's shadow is very personal to me. I grew up idolizing my father. Um, you know, he was always kind of this prolific myth of a man that I never knew if I would ever measure up to him, you know, and, and I in in the film, there's like uh, the dialogue of I was, you know, would wonder if my hands would be as large as his hands that that's exactly accurate. I I would remember him driving me to soccer practice or hockey practice and just wondering if I was ever going to be qualified as a man. Um, but of course, you know, what the movie is, you know, it you think it's a father-son film, but what it really becomes is a mother-son film. And what happened with me while I was writing it, I lost my mom, my mom to Alzheimer's. And then when I when I lost her, that's only when I realized how much I took her for granted because she was always there. You know, my father was more elusive. He was out, you know, providing for the family. My mom was a stay at home mom doing laundry, making food for us, uh, just just always there. And, and when I by losing her, that's when I realized that she was actually the hero. And, and that's that journey for me personally is what I wanted William to go on. Well, I loved it. I really did, man. Like the, the storyline that you've got in there is just, it's so personal and intimate and mixed in with all the this thrills and the action. It's just a perfect blend, man. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And as I was telling Daniel earlier, you're right. It's been so long since we've gotten, you know, a twister sized film and I, I loved it. Uh, <laughs> and I, that did bring up that something I wanted to address that you, there is at least one that I saw kind of a twister Easter egg, if you will, uh, with the great late Bill Paxton uh, in there. Uh, is there anything else that maybe audiences should be on the lookout for as far as little Easter eggs here and there? Of course, I you can't have a movie without Easter eggs, right? That's the fun <laughs> part. Um, yeah, well, the news, the meteorologist forecaster who's on television in the prologue, his name is Gary England. That's the same uh, reporter that was at the beginning of Twister. And he's a prolific, uh, you know, weather forecaster who works for Channel 9, the local station in Oklahoma City. And to me, that was, I had to get Gary involved because 
it's Gary England and a lot of storm chasers when they watch the movie, they're going to know who exactly he is. <laughs> I'd say for you know storm chasers, there's so much that I wanted to make, get right to get accurate. Um, I spent four years developing this and, and producing and making and delivering the movie. And I'd say the community of the storm chasers, they were so supportive. Uh, I've met unbelievable uh, people in the science fields and just chasers alike that taught me everything from the software they used, every screen that you watch in the movie, that's real software that the, the chasers actually use yeah. and what goes in those screens. I wanted the weather events to be accurate because why not, you know, why not? <laughs> no, exactly. No, it, it, and it adds to the film. It really does. The legitimacy, the fact that you've got other storm chasers throughout the film. Um, now, were those actors, were those real storm chasers that you had included in the film or was it a, a mixture? There were uh, a handful of storm chasers that I purposely wanted to put in the movie just as a, a like a nod to yeah. their involvement. Um, the cashier, uh, his name is Skip Talbot. He's a fantastic storm chaser. He's a pretty popular one. And uh, there's a diner scene uh, probably close to the end of Act 2, beginning of Act 3. Um, there's a, a National Weather Service man wearing a blue jacket. His name is Steve George. And in fact, Steve George was the man who introduced me to storm chasing and him and his wife, um, they, they're both part of Tempest Tours, which was kind of the, the seed of the whole concept of how storm chasing's become like Disneyland in the Midwest. It's become a tourist attraction. And Tempest Tours is a real storm tours company where paying customers come from all over the world. Um, so I had to put Steve in there because he he's just awesome. So yeah, there's there's a lot of involvement in on all fronts with the film. Oh, I love it! I love it. Uh, and speaking of the of the cast, you've you've brought together so many amazing actors and actresses for this film. Can, can you just talk us uh, through bring, bringing together this ensemble that you have? Absolutely. Um, you know, when you have an independent movie. You, you really need the attachment of, of a name and Alec Baldwin jump started everything. It, it was actually about two years ago around my birthday. Um, I remember when, when I found out from the producers that he was going to sign on and I was, I was so excited and I was also so nervous. I was like, Oh my <laughs> God, I actually have to do this. Right. It's my first film with Alec Baldwin. And of course, when Alex involved, you know, it just helps the whole process. Um, I really wanted to bring my mom back through and uh, through through Quinn, mm -hmm. and speaking with Anne the first time on the phone, she she got it. Um, she's you know, it's it's a, it's a huge tragedy to have lost her, um, like we did. But you no, know, she's a she's a mom of two boys, and she you know we just we really connected with Quinn. Uh, Skeet ultimately was was a fantastic choice for Roy. He was a great um, he had a great dynamic with Alec. Uh, they both played off each other wonderfully. And, and to have those three, you know, the kids are one thing with Jordan and Daniel, but to have Skeet and, and Alec on your first film, um, I was very fortunate to be able to work with them. Now, what was it like directing those guys? I mean, with, with the, the type of film that this is, I mean, I'm certain that there's certain things that have to be very specifically placed and take place. Uh, so, so what was it like kind of giving them direction? And, you know, like you said, th this being your first film, was there yes. an intimidation factor there, I guess? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the first handful of days, I, I, I you, you kind of wonder, am I allowed to, to give notes? You know, can I, can I tell Alec, you know, can we try it this way? You know, and, and you just, you have to realize that they signed on. This is your film. It's your job to direct them. And as soon as you can get past that, it becomes super easy. But of course, there was that, that you know, I would call it, it might have been, ten, you know, the shoot was only 20 days. It was a very fast shoot. And the first five days were with Alec. I started with Alec. And, you know, I would say the first couple of days, uh, I was very tense and I, and it took me a while to warm up. And by day five, we were just, you know, it was just flowing. And I, I think we were just starting to understand each other. And that's a tough thing on these short projects is by the time you start driving with each other, you know, it's over. 
Um, and I, I will always remember Alec, he brought me into his trailer after the fifth day and he was so excited. He was like, oh man, I wish, I wish we had more time. I wish we had more days because I'm just starting to taste. I'm just starting to feel Zane Rogers. And it was just such a compliment to be able to, to get him so excited about the role. And, 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 and of course, you know, him portraying the storm chaser of Zane Rogers. So that was, that was exciting. Yeah. It, can you also talk a little bit about uh, Daniel and Jordan, your, your two young talents in this film? Yeah. And because having them there who are kind of newer to the industry as well as, you know, having these A-list actors just created this really good synergy, this really good blend of casting. So, so what was it like working with these two, uh, these young, new blossoming actors? I mean, Daniel and, and Jordan, uh, an another reason why, ca again, casting is so important is you cast the right person, it makes the job easier. You know, you cast someone who's not right for it for whatever reasons, you have an uphill battle. The nice thing about both Daniel and Jordan, even though, you know, Daniel having somewhat more experience than Jordan, I think Jordan was coming off We Are Who We Are, which is a fantastic HBO series. I recommend anyone watch that. This was her first movie. So she was very nervous. And a lot of my job with her was to make her feel comfortable and just give her kudos and say, you know, you're doing exactly what you need to do. Just keep doing it. Um, I remember there was a scene where she screams. She just like screams at the top of her lungs. And she she admitted to me, it, it was vulnerable, it was beautiful. She's like, Jamie, I've never screamed. I'm nervous. Like, how, I don't know how to, I'm like, trust me, just scream. Don't worry about it. Just let it out. And she, you know, it, it's just, these are the things, you know, Daniel was awesome. Um, he would get, I would give him notes and every time he would, he would always say easy. Whenever he said the word easy, I just, I got so excited because I knew he got it and he was going to deliver it. So it, it's just, it was fun. And again, it casting was everything. I was lucky. I had pretty much constant, I had a control over the casting process. Sometimes, you know, it's out of director's hands. You know, sometimes the producers, they put their foot down, they need to cast this person, but the cast were great. Um, they were perfect for the roles. And I just, for a first film, I, I was very lucky to work with all of them. No, what? I agree, man. The, the casting in this film was just wonderful. I, I loved it. Audiences are going to love it, I'm sure. Is there one particular scene or, or moment in this film that this maybe, you know, a, a powerhouse of, of a moment that you just really hope that fans and audiences connect with? I would probably say um, one of my favorite moments is uh, it's the Alec Baldwin scene in the motel room when he he takes his hat off. And, and this this is something that not everyone will know. Alec always has his cowboy hat on and it's, it's almost like he, he's playing a role. He's playing the showman of Brody storm tours. He only takes his hat off during certain moments of the film. And that's kind of when I wanted him to be really the, the man he was and without the whole veil of being a showman. And he's somewhat drunk in the scene and he has this really beautiful uh, discussion with William about William's parents and it's the first time we see the humanity of that character. And that was also the fifth day I got to work with Alex. So by then we were very comfortable with each other. And I think that's Alex's best uh, scene in the film. And it's one of my favorite scenes in the film. I agree. I, I really do. I, I love that whole interaction that takes place. It's It really is a wonderful film, man. I, I can't wait for people to watch it and, and to see it. Uh, I, I, of course, want people to know uh, if there's anything else you're working on or anything coming up, anything you can tease or, or, or let audiences know what, what you got going up or coming down the pipeline. Absolutely. I, I just finished production on my first documentary feature. It's called Sanibel. It's about uh, the seashellers of Southwest Florida and the seashells they collect. It's a, it's a fun little uh, doc, but the, the other aspect of it, which is also weather related is uh, in October, Hurricane Ian came through as a major hurricane and decimated the island of Sanibel. So it's, it's really a, a movie about rebuilding and it's, you know, the seashells are kind of a through line to show how people, you know, they need the ocean to heal. So I'm very excited about that. And that's uh, kind of next on my docket. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and I, of course, I, I want fans to be able to connect with you, stay up to date with everything you're doing. Is there a platform or a website where people can, can stay connected with you? 
Absolutely. Uh, my personal Instagram page where I kind of post all my updates is HJW, which is my initials, Herbert James Winterstern. It's HJW Films. And uh, the movie also has a website, it's uh, supercellmovie.com. It has a list of all the theaters and cities it's playing in on Friday. Um, I will be in Dallas at the Galaxy Grandscape Theater to present and do a Q&A on opening night. So if you're in Dallas, please attend. I still think there's tickets available. And uh, yeah, check out the Supercell Instagram page. It's Supercell The Movie. Um, and yeah, you'll be able to get all the updates there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Jamie, any, any final parting words for audiences uh, regarding Supercell? I would say um, have a lot of fun. It's a movie where, you know, it's it's really for all ages. Um, that was the intention. And ultimately, you know, if I can have the audience take anything away from it, it's let's not take our parents for granted. Um, that That's a big theme of the movie. Awesome. Awesome. Jamie, thank you so much for, for taking some time for me, man. I, I really appreciate it. It's been such a pleasure to get to talk to you and I, I can't wait to see what uh, you got coming up next. I'm very excited. Thank you, Tim.